Hello YouTube, welcome to another series of my interviews here at the European Parliament. Um, again, as always, I'm in distinguished company. Today, um, it's a lady you may know or may not know, uh, particularly if you're involved with the humanist movement. Here's a little bio of what she's been up to. So Sophia Helena, or Sophie, Infeld was born on the 13th of September 1963. She has been a member of the European Parliament since the 20th of July 2004. For Democrats 66 is part of the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe parliamentary group. She studied history at the University of Leiden from 1982 to 1991. She is an honorary associate of the UK National Secular Society, which in 2011 awarded her with the Secularist of the Year Prize. Sophie Infeld MP is a woman of immense energy, immense courage and immense determination. She created and chairs the European Parliamentary Platform for Secularism. I, I also think it's a very special moment to receive this award because um, I think that most of you present here have, uh, have heard about the ruling of the Strasbourg court yesterday. Now, it's not as if I want to bore you all afternoon with stories about court rulings. She has also sought a condemnation of Pope Benedict over his critical comments on gender theory, which I suspect among other things. So that's uh, Sophie, um, great hero of mine, great humanist, outspoken on many issues. In the time we have today, let's find out face to face a little bit more. Sophie, thank you for coming along today. I appreciate your time. I go straight to it because you're a very busy woman. Um, can I ask you a little, about, a little bit about your own background? Um, were you brought up in a religious home or anything like that? No, no, I, I don't have a religious background myself. I'm, I'm an atheist. Um, my mother was uh, a member of the humanist movement in the Netherlands, mm. uh, which is not necessarily yeah. atheist, but largely. So I don't have a religious background myself. Okay. No, I say that to you because as a, I describe it like what they, it's an emotive term, like recovering alcoholics. I'm a recovering religionist. I was brought up Catholic and I was 10 years Jehovah's Witness. I was a fundamentalist. So um, I reversed my colors, you see, a little bit. No, but it's beneficial in, in, in my campaign because I know what I'm talking about in terms yeah, of being yeah. deep, steeped in it. Not that you don't know either, but... Uh, no, but it's interesting you say that because very often um, I, I'm reproached, you know, because I, I'm sharing the, the so-called platform for secularism in politics in the European Parliament. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, f I, I often get reproached for being, a, you know, very fanatic and anti-clerical and anti-Vatican and anti-religion, which is not true at all. As a matter of fact, I'm fairly yeah. neutral. Um, and I, I often feel that people, uh, Catholics, for example, who have themselves uh, uh, suffered as Catholics from yeah. um, wrongdoings of the Catholic Church are, are much more emotional about things. Well, do you think I we have a right to be angry? Of course. Yeah. But everybody who's been, you know, has been suffering at the hands of yeah. a religious or other <laughs> yeah. institution has the right to be angry. Yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah, you've been described as hardworking. Lots of compound adjectives: hardworking, self-reliant, plain speaking. Are you a workaholic, <laughs> or what? Are you, are you, you have this reputation. <laughs> member of the Workaholics Anonymous. Yeah, Workaholics Anonymous. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, can I just refer to, um, or congratulate you by the way, on the Irwin Prize. Um, I saw that clip. Thank you. Um, it was very good. Um, and uh, uh, Professor Grayling with the bouquet of flowers there. I thought it was very kind of you to uh, give up your £5,000 reward for that. That was very generous. You said something on it though that I disagree with. Oh, well, then we've got well, something to discuss. Yeah, you said for example, that we, and you were echoing um, um, Professor Grayling's remarks, um, and perhaps it's, it's a, a cosmetic difference, but when you said, for example, um, we're not here to impose atheism, okay? So, and I, don't, you, I want you to qualify that for me. My first impression on hearing that was, I'm not here to impose, it's a strong word, it's an emotive word, but imposition. Um, the thing about it is, I mean, it sounded a little bit sort of cozy, that it's like if you just mind your own business and take the crosses out of the church and take off the burqa and the pot, we'll just leave you alone. 
religions have always imposed their will on us in our face. Do you understand? They continue to do it. They have um, no right to do so. They, they don't have any right either. I know. Maybe it's semantics, but I'm just saying. What did you mean by that? They, because I, I want to be, I want to impose atheism in terms of I want to. It's like a teacher wants to impose reason and education. Do you know what I mean? Softly. No, but I. Uh, uh, no, I, I of course always uh, debate with people on, on substance, and I will always try and convince them of my views. But you know, I'm I'm a liberal democrat. Yeah. I I strongly believe in freedom of conscience and freedom of thought, yeah. uh, which is you know also freedom of religion. If the people are free to to believe in whatever they like, and I have no right yeah. to impose my views. Yeah. I can try and convince them, but I have no right to impose my views. But neither yeah. do they. But what methods what should I, we employ then to, do, to what, convince no, them? No, what is very important, I think, is that we, uh, and that is what secularism is all about. Secularism um, is is about uh, uh, creating state institutions and and societal institutions mm. which which give room to everybody. Yeah. Um, and that me and, and of course there is a grey area because if people, um, I, as I said, I believe in freedom of conscience, freedom of, of religion and belief. Mm. At the same time, uh, that freedom of religion and belief is is not um, can never serve as a pretext in order to restrict the freedoms of others. Yeah. And of course, very often fundamental rights and freedom of religion clash. For, for example, where religious groupings. Uh, claim the right to discriminate against women or gay people, or claim the right, mm. and, and this is, I think, 90% of the, the cases, mm. to uh, to regulate sexuality and procreation and, and family matters. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that is, yeah. I, I, I do believe that freedom of religion is an individual right, mm -hmm. uh, and therefore much closer to freedom of conscience. I mean, you can... Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, but it's fine. It's a good answer. It's like, but you're speaking with your politician's hat on, and that's fine because you're a member. You are a politician. I was rather hoping we could take it in another direction, but no, that's fine. Really, um, I just think, you know, if you think of the efforts of people inspired by Sam Harris, particularly Richard Dawkins, Christopher Hitchens, the writing, we 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 had to raise the conversation, whether people wanted it or not. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I don't have to wear that hat. I will. I. I mean, of course, I'm kind of on both camps. I would believe in doing the educational part. The legal part, the legislative part, you understand, policing things like the blasphemy law in Ireland, for example, you, you need to go in a very yeah, form of political route. Absolutely. However, my other side of my face, I'm, I'm into satire, I'm into ridicule, I mean, it's very soft. But into. the one, I, 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 I don't really see where the difference is. Again, well, I mean, if someone I said to you, I saw Michael Jackson in the street yesterday, yeah. but it's my religious conviction. You can respect the person, but you don't. I mean, what are you supposed to respond to but, that? But yeah, but the, but there because you know respect is a, is an important word here. I respect the right of every single individual yeah. to hold their own beliefs. I do not necessarily have to respect what they believe in. Okay, so we're on the I, same I may think that it's all poppycock, yeah. but it's irrelevant what I think. Yeah. Just as it is irrelevant how they see my views, yeah. but they should respect my rights as yeah. an individual. And yeah. that is what it's all about. That is what we can regulate and what, where we make public policies. Sure, yeah. But we cannot regulate what's inside people's heads. And as a liberal, I would not want to. Right. Yeah. No, but I mean, I think, uh, well, let's bring it on then a little bit. Are you familiar with the 2009 legislation, the blasphemy law in Ireland? Okay. What's your first impression of that? No, I'm, I'm, I'm against. I, I don't think you know it's it's medieval. Yeah. We tell the entire world that we you know we're telling, for example, people in the Arab Spring now that they should mm. not adopt blasphemy laws. Yeah. So whereas we have blasphemy laws in in Europe, even in my country, there is a blasphemy law, yeah. and my party and other parties have been trying to abolish that many times, but so far it's failed. Really? I think it's medieval. Well, of course, and I of course I mean from a legal point of view, a constitutional point of view. I mean, this is, everyone knows that the current hate speech or anti-inflammatory speech that exists in those countries. One thinks particularly of Germany because of its past and all of that, you know, inciting violence. That was good enough, in my opinion, to cover all of that, you understand? Um, uh, but the blasphemy law was such a regression, it's an but I, embarrassment. I, I, we agree, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm opposed yeah. to any kind of blasphemy right. law. And, and incidentally, I also think that there's a certain hypocrisy there because if religious people claim this, this, you know, exception saying oh we are terribly offended if somebody says something nasty about our religion yeah. but religions themselves say very offensive nasty things about women yeah. about gay people yeah. so you know ha don't we have the right to be sure, offended yeah. why why do they need more protection yeah. than i do for yeah. example so it's that kind of thing that we should be looking at but not but not to come back to your initial point not to 
to what people believe in and their right to exercise religion. If I think, for example, there's uh, an old lady that I know, uh, you know, very old, um, she's a Catholic, and for her, religion means, it gives her a lot of comfort, she's part of a community, uh, you know, makes her happy. Yeah. And she, it doesn't take away from my rights. Yeah. So, am well, I, well, should yeah, I take that away from her? Why? Well, you know, it's not a question of being dramatic, taking anything away, it's posing a question. On that, just a, on that point, for example, my mother is a Catholic, she knows my views, and she, her argument is, and it's like an awful lot of apologists, when I raise the points to her, she says, Randall, I don't bother anyone, I just go to Mass and say my prayers. And I say, Mom, fine, absolutely fine, you continue. However, by sitting in that chair, you are validating a guy called Ratzinger, who can go to Africa and upset the years of humanitarian work on the condom issue, and all of the rest of it. No, but that is, but that's, the exactly, that's exactly where the, where the tensions are. But yeah. incidentally, I think this is, this is a problem which is pr pretty specific for the Catholic Church, I think, because all other religions are much more dispersed and, and, and uh, have, you know, there's a wider range of, of communities. Um, but not all Catholics feel that Ratzinger speaks on their behalf. I think there is growing disenchantment with the, 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 you know, the, the direction, the leadership of the Catholic Church is taking, yeah. and um, uh, again, but I still feel that there are people who are Catholics, and again, I'm an atheist. I mean, I cannot empathize with yeah. with with religious people. I simply do not understand what you know what they believe in because I, I don't believe it. But I, I acknowledge their right okay. to to believe in those things. But they should not. It doesn't mean that they have the right to restrict other people's rights or that they have the right to harm other people. And that is, of course, where, um, you know, where the, the, the tensions are. Okay, very good. Um, talk about blasphemy slash free speech, because for me that's what it's about. You advocate freedom of thought and free of conscience. Okay, I have to ask you this next question. You may not be comfortable with it, but it is on this topic and you are Dutch. Given the fact that Gert Wilders was exonerated in the court case in the end, the judge said, of course, what you said was a bit stupid, you offended Muslims and all the rest of it, but you didn't actually break the law. Having said that, do you think he should have been charged in the first place? 